Those are highlights of Emmanuel Divinu's report for Joy Prime documentary. I beg your pardon. But let's visit our earlier story, the one about the finance minister speaking about progress made in negotiations with China with regards to our IMF deal. Joy Business Assistant Editor George Riafi joins us from Washington, D.C. So, George, tell us specifically what exactly this progress is and what it means for our quest in securing an IMF deal. Well, Ben is the speaking of this uh, engagement in, in, in Washington, D.C. The, the finance minister has sought to assure that on their part, they've actually met all the preconditions that is required before they can go for an IMF program. And that is the basis where he's doing this extrapolation is that all other things being equal, by May, we should be able to get the IMF program. And that is the basis. So he believes that having met all these requirements, it is clear that what is left is that the board would then, if they make their request to the board, having gone through the African department and the other department of the IMF, they will indeed approve Diana's program. Mm, and George, we've heard uh, the IMF boss, Kristalina Georgieva, speak so passionately about Ghana and uh, talk about how we must keep hope alive and the confidence and the passion with which he speaks is one that is very noticeable. Did the the funds intervention in any way have a role to play in china deciding to come on board now in in the words of the finance minister and why is china doing so if that's not the case well ben is from the minister's uh, comments it appears the icebreaker was when he personally paid a visit to uh, China to try and give them some further assurance and convince them about some clarity that they were seeking to get. Also, don't forget that Venice, it appears that now China is being positioned as the bad boy, the one that is dragging the process. So, for instance, here when the G24 ministers had a meeting and were briefing journalists later, they, they, they sought to tell us that now China has pledged that they will fast track the debt restructuring talks with Ghana and then Zambia. So all these reports are there is not helping. Plus, Ben is, I mean, if you engage people behind the scenes here, there's a lot of lobbying going on. And the good word, and, and, I, and I, I stand to be educated that following the fund for a while, I have not seen a situation where a country mm -hmm. has applied for a program. And mm -hmm. it's like an examiner telling you that, Ben is, listen, even give me the blank sheet, I'll pass you. And so the good word is so high. But the fund also wants to ensure that despite all this goodwill, it won't be a blank check. We should see some commitment in terms of these structural reforms. What are you putting in place to improve revenue? What are we doing to ensure that they never again? So all these things are going on behind the scenes. And everyone, Ben, is that I engage. Despite the concerns being raised about Ghana, you get the sense that we want to help Ghana to come out of this challenge. So all these maneuverings appears to be putting some subtle pressure on China. Mm. And that is why now they've given that assurance that they will participate in uh, Ghana's program. When there was the, the first uh, Paris Club meeting that sought to establish the partial committee, China didn't join, but we are picking up indication that at the next meeting they might join. They raised issues about some of the debts and all of them can't be classified. That is the 1.9 billion as a state debt, you have a situation where a Ghana is indebted to the China Exim Bank. So mm -hmm. how do we deal with all those things? So all those things are being worked out. That's subtle pressure. And it appears that nobody wants to be seen as the bad boy because of the, the geopolitics that is going on. And that might be working in Ghana's favor. Mm. Uh, uh, George, finally, tell us what to expect today. Well, the IMF African Department is trying to give us some updates on their projections in terms of growth for Africa, and we'll be seeking to get some understanding what was their basis for that 1.6% growth for Ghana. So we'll also get an update on a Ghana's program request. Where are we right now, Benis? I mean, what we understand that if today Ghana submits all its documents to the fund, it has to take, up, take about six weeks for it to us to get a slot for a board review. So as we speak right now, has Ghana submitted its economic program? Has it submitted its letter of intent? And what has been the concerns raised by the staff before the program is approved? So all these things will happen. On the government side, they're also trying to uh, wrap up some engagements with the multilateral institutions like the World Bank, the African Development Bank as well, 
to see whether they can get other commitment. Don't forget that Ben is the three billion that is coming from the IMF is going directly to the Bank of Ghana in terms of balance of payment support. Other institutions are supposed to come on board, for instance, World Bank to support budget programs for the next four years. And so all these meetings are supposed to go on to ensure that they get some commitment from these institutions on them participating in Ghana's IMF bailout program. George, we'll leave it here. Uh, George Biafi is assistant editor here at Joint Business, and he is in Washington, D.C., attending the IMF World Bank Spring Meetings and giving us very important updates on Ghana's quest to secure an IMF deal as soon as possible. You're watching Joint News today. I'm Bernice Abubedulansa.